Good morning. Welcome to worship here at the drive-in at Christ Lutheran Church. Hit the switch on the bottom. Oh, hit the switch on the bottom. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran Church in Roanoke, Virginia. I am grateful to worship with you this morning on this fifth Sunday of in Lent, but also you may notice there's a six and a five there. The six goes first, and we need to sing happy birthday to Pastor Dave, who's going to come up here so we can all look at it. this morning you are invited to join us for Bible study tomorrow morning in the fellowship hall or via zoom that link will go out a little bit later today um, we meet every Monday and would love to have you join us at 10 30 a.m. this Wednesday is our last meeting of uh, Wednesday night in the season of Lent and we'll be gathering here in the fellowship hall at six o'clock for soup and bread and uh, in the sanctuary or online on facebook live for evening prayer and then uh, we've got bible study in the chapel and choir rehearsal in the fellowship hall at 7 30. if you are age zero through fifth grade and you've got a family here we invite all of you to come and join us for an easter egg hunt and lunch and some other fun activities today at 11 30 we are going to start either in the fellowship hall or right outside we'll begin with egg hunt at 11 30. and then just a reminder that beginning on uh, next sunday April 10th begins our journey through Holy Week with Palm Sunday. We gather uh, as we normally do at 9 a.m. here and at 10.30 a.m. inside for Palm and Passion Sunday. Maundy Thursday, April 14th, we worship in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. On Good Friday, we invite you to join us along with our neighbor congregations here at Christ Lutheran and we will gather for a way of the cross service as we walk down Grandin Road uh, with cross and singing and hearing the story of our Lord's passion. That's at 3 o'clock on Good Friday the 15th. And then at 7 o'clock, we will be worshiping here uh, for Good Friday as well as on Facebook Live. And then, of course, we'll be celebrating on Easter Sunday the 17th. We are going to be joining again with some of our ecumenical neighbors down at Evergreen Cemetery at 6.30 a.m. So if you'd like to, if you're up anyway, or if you'd like to join us for that sunrise service, we'd love to have you. And then our 9 o'clock service here for the drive-in, as well as 10.30 uh, in the sanctuary. We will be celebrating Easter that day. We continue now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. 
In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom, I'm, whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning, and happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Yeah, it truly is a great day. I, I got up this morning and I actually I slept in an uh, extra 20 minutes. That was my first present to me. The second present um, uh, we received in, in, uh, on the UPS came yesterday. Uh, the new battery for the church's AED. Um, and uh, I installed that this morning saying to myself, I, I hope I don't need to use this today. 
Good to have you here today. Birthdays are great. They're great days of celebration. And each year gives us new challenges. I was just thinking when young Micah came forward uh, that when, when he first uh, came to church, he was down here. And then each year he got up a little bit and a little bit and his voice got lower and lower. It's good to see you, Micah. Thanks for reading. So today's gospel uh, reading from Isaiah. Mr. Gavin, come here. And Landon, come here. Come up here. You guys can come right here. Come right there. Right there. Right there. Because we're going to talk about... Yeah, no, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Come on, Gavin. Right here. No, right here. There. Now get down. Get next to him, Gavin. Okay. So today we're talking about Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet, and a prophet is someone who speaks the word of God and speaks on behalf of God, but the words are for us, or for the people. Hear what the prophet says about God. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself, so, listen to this, that they might declare my praise. So God gives us his love and his presence, his, his care for us in all creation. He gives us the food we eat, the water we drink, the sun that warms us, and he even helps us grow. Well, what does it mean to declare praise? Gavin, what does it mean to tell somebody something? When you use words to, to talk about someone. And, well, when we do that about God, and we declare, declare means to speak really, really strongly or to tell people about something. When we declare the praise of God, we're telling others about God and about Jesus. And that's what God asks us to do, to tell others about God's love for them, to tell them about God's son, Jesus, who came for us, who loves us. Right, Gavin? Who does Jesus love? Jesus loves who? Me. Me. Remember we sing that? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. That is declaring the praise of God, the love of God for the world. So I know both of you can talk. Even you, Gavin. I know you can talk. And I know that Landon can talk. And I know that even Naomi and, of course, Denman can right? You all can declare, you can tell people about God's love. And you're going to say, like, well, how, how can I tell people about God's love? Well, you could just tell them a story about yourself and, and how love comes to you. It comes to you from your sister and your brothers. It comes to you from your mom and your dad. It comes to you from God through Jesus. So, I want you, tomorrow morning, when you wake up, all right, listen to this, I want you to declare the, the love, the praise of God. Can you do that? Let's pray. God, help us to declare your love, to give praise to you, and to tell the people of the world all about your love for all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, go, 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 go. Go on. Hey, that's quit beating up on my number. Get at it. The Holy Gospel according to John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. 
You also have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So taken on its own, this scene that, G J that John paints for us at the beginning of our reading, it seems nice enough. Jesus comes into town to visit some friends. They throw a dinner party for him. Lazarus, recently raised from the dead, sits with Jesus and the other guests at the table. Martha's busy serving the meal. It all seems pretty normal. Pretty, pretty normal. At least at first. Before Mary got out the perfume, an entire year's wages worth. That might have looked like any other dinner until she started rubbing Jesus' feet with all of that valuable, minty, musky, smelling oil, wiping his feet with her hair. Can't you just feel the awkward silence in the room? Some are probably staring at Mary and Jesus, jaws drop to the floor. Others are looking away from this risque scene that she's created, letting her hair down, touching a woman, touching a man in public. Well, finally, Judas' perturbation takes over and he has to break the silence. Not only is Mary's behavior wildly inappropriate, she's wasting money. She didn't need that valuable pound of nard oil. She could have sold it and given the money away, provided so much for others in need. And that's when Jesus speaks up. Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. Jesus is the one who finally addresses the elephant in the room. Because you see, this dinner party only looks normal at the beginning if we don't know the rest of the story. I can't imagine this was any ordinary gathering of friends just enjoying one another's company. No, I'm guessing tensions were high in that room. But no one wanted to talk about what was really going on. As you see, at this point in John's gospel, Jesus' days were numbered and everyone knew it. His ministry had earned him the fear and anger of the religious leaders. More and more people were believing in him, making him a growing threat to those in power. He'd already escaped stoning and arrest. After raising Lazarus from the dead, the belief of some and the anger of others both became stronger. And as a symbol of Jesus' power, Lazarus is now at risk too. So this is definitely no ordinary dinner party. And somehow, Mary seems to be the only one willing to acknowledge what's really going on. I'm sure, she picks a, kind of a strange way to cut through the tension, but no one in that house could ignore it anymore. They could see it, they could smell it. The one they called Lord, was headed to a cross, to execution. Mary seems to have had a, a singular focus that night. She was devoted to Jesus. She sensed an opportunity to do a loving act of service for her Lord right then and there, and she seized it. For her social customs and sensibilities had no place in that moment, and Jesus received it for the loving action that it was. Those of us who do know the whole story can't help but seeing in Mary's anointing Jesus' own act of compassion for his disciples before he was arrested. On the day we call Maundy Thursday, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, a job for lowly servants, not great leaders. He did it as an act of humble service, and then he called the disciples, all disciples, to live their lives with the same humility and love toward others. I have set you an example, he said, 
that you should also do as I have done to you. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. This love to which Jesus called those first disciples and us, it's not just a feeling, not just a, a sentiment. He calls us to follow his example in active, humble service. Mary did this even before he gave the commandment. What Jesus would do for his disciples, what he would ask them to do for one another, Mary has already done for him. Her act showed forth the love that would be the hallmark of Christian discipleship. Mary had such a clear focus. It's like she was able to tune out all the background noise, all the confusion, all the fear. This was just how we saw her another time that Jesus came to dinner. Remember that? Martha was busy preparing and working in the kitchen while Mary sat and listened to Jesus. At these two dinners, we see a woman whose attention was exactly where it needed to be. On Jesus on her relationship with him. In that moment, she focused her whole being on him, even her hair. And the result was an act of love and devotion. You probably heard this comparison about how we spend our time with a, a glass jar of rocks and sand. You know what I'm talking about? I remember a, another pastor doing this demonstration years and years and years ago he took this glass jar and filled it to the top with rocks and asked us if it looked full and of course we knew that no more rocks were going to fit in and and so we all said yes and then he took some sand and poured it in the jar it filled up all the little cracks and crevices between the rocks so we were wrong it wasn't full when he asked well then he emptied the jar and filled it with sand first and this time the rocks, they don't fit, right? And he told us to think of this jar as our lives. The rocks represent the most important things. The sand is all the other things that fill our time, things that aren't so important. And if we fill our lives with the things that don't really matter, we won't have time and energy for the, the rocks. The most important things are really the most important people. And what's worse, when we fill our lives with that sand, we have no time for our relationship with our loving God. Mary somehow seemed to get this. Judas, not so much. It's hard for us to know what to think of him here, you know? I mean, we know he's in the wrong, and at least according to Jesus, we, we know that soon he's going to betray Jesus. We know, he, we, know, we know he's the bad guy. What he says makes perfect sense. I mean, it does seem really wasteful to use the ointment as extravagantly as Mary did. 300 denarii, a year's wages. I mean, wouldn't it have actually been better spent helping the poor? So maybe the problem wasn't exactly what he said, but where he focused his attention. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Religious leaders are plotting to have Jesus killed. They're heading to Jerusalem in the morning, and Judas is talking about money. Money that, according to John, he didn't even really want to give away, but to keep for himself. And we know where this is going, right? Money lured his focus away from Jesus to the point that he would be the one to hand Jesus over to those who would have him killed. In this chaotic world in which we live of, of selfishness and isolation of disease and violence, what is it in your life? Or how about the focus of our life together as a congregation? Perhaps, like Judas and so many of us, it is money. Or perhaps it's something else. We all have these things in our lives. How 
would your life be different if you could be a little less like Ju Judas and a little more like Mary? What if we woke up every morning truly aware and grateful for the extravagant gifts that God has given us through Christ? How would your relationship with God be different, and how would that affect your relationship with family and friends, strangers, even enemies? What's important in your life? What's important in the life of us as a Christian community? Where is our focus? Are we taking the opportunities that come our way to love, to actively love one another? In this season of Lent, we're called to reflect on our baptism and who we are as children of God. As we look forward to Holy Week, we remember the suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus, and we know that it was all done for us. We experience God's grace in the bread and wine of Holy Communion, our Lord's body given for you. We hear Jesus' last words as he went to die for us. We celebrate the resurrection knowing that Christ lives with us and grants us new, abundant, eternal life with him. All this simply because God loves. Because God is devoted to you. What an extravagant gift. Amen. Serve the gospel and bring forward leaders 
who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage of the face of change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. Especially we lift up Jean and Lynn and Stetson. We pray for healing for Hunter, for Carol, for baby Thatcher, for Angie and Glenn. We pray for consolation for the family of John Wardock and for all who have experienced loss. We pray for all the people in Ukraine who have lost their life in this war, in this struggle, Lord. Bring peace. Bring peace to Ukraine. Bring peace to Russia. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of his peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we give you fullest thanks and praise for all and for your living water and our merciful guide. Together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we might be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. 
and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Receive this meal and be nourished in God's love. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Now may you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.